It's 2021, and I've been avoiding making this video because I'm not a fan of New Year's resolution videos or self-help advice. And I also try to avoid the year-end wrap-up video because the new year is kind of an artificial milestone. It doesn't really exist outside of the social context that we live in. It's not as if this day or yesterday are any different than any other day. So I don't want to give them significance that they don't have. But it is a great opportunity to talk about the books that I've been listening to. So I will do a tiny bit of a year-end wrap-up just because I haven't done this in a while. So in 2020, I read 53 books. So one a week, essentially which is light reading for me. Normally I do two or three books a week, but I read a lot of really long books this past year. And there was a lot of information that I really wanted to soak in. I just didn't want to rush through. Uh, in 2018, I think I read 180 some books and I read 30 books in the month of August in 2018. And I felt myself kind of rushing through and I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to worry about the number. I want to really take in the information that I'm getting. So 2018 was a slimmer, more intense year of listening. And of those 53 books, one of them got five stars, which is my highest rating that I give to a book. And it's pretty rare that a book gets five stars. Two of them got four and a half stars, which is still an amazing listen. And I think 19... I forget, it's somewhere between 12 and 20, got four stars. So the five-star review is for the book Mama's Last Hug by Franz Duvall, who is a Dutch primatologist. And rather than tell you about that book here, I am now, or well, in a moment, going to play the review that I recorded. So every time I finish a book, I record a review, which then goes up on Patreon. Um, but this review went up over a year ago, so I'm going to uh, attach it to this video in a moment. But before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about the two four-and-a-half star books. The first is How We Learn by Stanislas Dehaene, who I think is French, I could be wrong. And that is a really incredible book about the neuroscience of learning and memory and what happens in the brain when we take information and what parts of the brain play around with it, how it becomes something that we remember long-term, how it changes as it becomes a long-term memory. And essentially, what do we know about how knowledge is formed and how can we gain new knowledge, how can we break old habits, how are habits formed? So it's a deep dive into the neuroscience of learning and memory. Uh, and it's an incredible book. The second book that got four and a half stars is Falter by Bill McKibben, who is a professor at the college that I went to, Middlebury. And I was reluctant to give this book four and a half stars because he's a bit ideological, or more than a bit. He's pretty radical in his approach. And essentially, it's a book about the ending of the human game as he calls it, that we have crossed so many tipping points, uh, ecologically, climate change, economically, artificial intelligence, robotics, etc., cetera, uh, and just political extremism and polarization. We've gone past so many of these tipping points that it's inevitable that the human game comes to an end. And the only thing we can do to salvage even some of it is radical immediate transformation, which I'm not a fan of because my foundational principle at this point is compassion. And there's really no compassion in his book at all. It's uh, much more um, extreme. So he's talking about extremism while writing a book that's extremely written. Uh, but there's a lot of really important, valuable information in there. So I, I gave it four and a half stars because it's something that people need to be confronted by or with 
people need to know what we're doing. People need to know where we're heading so that we don't just keep burying our heads in the sand and consuming, consuming stuff that we don't need, information that's confusing and pointless, entertainment that just gets us through another day to work at the same old job that's part of a system that's bringing the world to its knees. Anyway, it's a tough listen. Uh, Mama's Last Hug, on the other hand, my five-star book, is a delightful listen. Uh, so I'm going to switch over to that recording now. And there'll be more videos to come. I recorded a bunch of stuff in December I haven't posted yet, so I'm going to post that after this one. But I just wanted to say, hello, here we are, 2021. Let's make each moment count. Not because it's a new year, but because moments should count, always. Even in the middle of November, they should count. Even in March, when our New Year's resolutions have worn off, those moments should count too. So here's to counting moments separately, individually, not adding them up. Okay, and here we go. Mama's last hug. January 25th, 2020, book review. Mama's Last Hug by Franz Duval. Five stars. This was a surprisingly good book uh, by one of the world's leading primatologists and therefore, in my opinion, one of the world's leading thinkers on mammalian behavior and emotion, which includes our own. Uh, I recently read Joseph Ledoux's latest book, and I'm forgetting the title, but even though I'm a huge fan of Joseph Ledoux, and I think I gave that book four and a half stars, he really puts consciousness on a pedestal and makes it something uniquely human and cautions against any attempt to see consciousness as something that evolves on a spectrum. It just in his belief, it seems as if it, it emerges in humans and that's about it. And it's a, a black or white issue. There is no spectrum. And I find this to be problematic. Uh, I'm not a fan of anthropocentric views, but I, I agree with most of what Joseph Ledoux says. And he attacks Franz Duvall, uh, as does um, the author of the book, How Emotions uh, Are Made, which uh, I'm forgetting the author's name, but wow, um, she really went to town trying to discredit him and people like him and it was clear from the way that she was writing that she had a, a score to settle uh, and I find that a gigantic turnoff. Um, so getting back into this book, Friends Duvall presents hundreds of studies demonstrating animal cognition, animal perception, animal deliberation, animal uh, rational thinking uh, and makes a really solid case for what many of us intuitively know but science has been struggling to prove or validate and therefore they're cautious to refer to anything in animal experiences in the same terminology that we would use to describe uh, a similar human experience. Uh, they're deathly afraid of anthropomorphizing. So, uh, Franz Duvall was scared about this because he knew about the backlash, but now he's older and he's just done so much research that he no longer gives a crap and he just comes right out and says it, that animals have emotions. Uh, it's hard to imagine looking at the data that they don't have consciousness, that they're not reasoning, that they don't have memories, that they don't have uh, mental maps of time that they compare against the present when they make decisions uh, and he just puts out study after study and it's fascinating um, and it coincides with much of the foundations of everything that I have learned um, and I loved his other book The Age of Empathy and Are We Smart Enough to Understand How Smart Animals Are or something like that uh, just a really compassionate man who 
backs up his beliefs with research. Uh, Lisa Feldman Barrett, that's the author of How Emotions Are Made. Um, and she's uh, violently opposed, it seems, to the idea that emotions are anything but narrative linguistic constructs and that no other creatures could possibly possess them. Um, so I highly recommend this book. It's been a while since I've given a book five stars and uh, I found myself taking ridiculously long notes while listening to this book. So I've got hours of my own notes to go through. So well worth the listen.